Small gains for all three indexes to start the shortened trading week. The Dow finished up 72 points to close at 23,430. The Nasdaq was up almost eight points to finish at 6790, and the S&P 500 was up three points to end at 2582. Market analysis tonight, Jim Lowell, Chief Investment Officer at Advisor Investments and Editor of FidelityInvestor.com. Hi, Jim. Hey, Mike. So all indexes are up to start the week. Uh, what were investors paying attention to? Well, there were no new negative catalysts, nothing to derail the notion that this is an economy here at home that's on a slow growth, not no growth track. So gains to be had down that road are likely. And also the global economy continues to improve in the established foreign markets, selected emerging markets. So without any disruption to that overall narrative, I think investors were fairly relaxed. We didn't gain dramatic ground here. But even the markets in, uh, in Europe and also across the board in Asia were effectively all up today on, I think, just general optimism that the global economy is growing. All right, you mentioned uh, Europe. Was there any impact from the new instability in Germany and Angela Merkel's inability to form a new coalition government? There was. You could see it in the currency, the euro, uh, definitely sort of had a question mark hovering around it all day in relationship to the, the strongest economic member of the EU being Germany and any sort of political flux there being potentially problematic. But the stock market uh, didn't really even bat an eye at it. Uh, the German stock market, the DAX, was up over half of 1%. So I think from an investment standpoint, the market's going to be focused on fundamental facts, not politics. That should be a fairly familiar theme. We've been saying that as regards our own political issues here at home in the markets for over a year. All right, as we talk about politics, though, how much should investors care that Janet Yellen is leaving the Fed board altogether when her term as chair ends? Well, highly capable, uh, steady hand at the helm, now no longer going to be there. It's really the, uh, the composition of the Board of Governors come February will look markedly different. What that means, of course, politically speaking, is the new administration will own the economy from there on out. Uh, that may or may not be a good thing. Uh, but I do think that she has uh, she certainly earned the right to stay. I thought she earned the right to stay on as chair. But she did the right thing today by signaling that uh, it will be a new ball game led by different coaches. Mm. All right. How much chance is there that the government will keep AT&T from buying Time Warner, which we reported on a moment ago? They're going to try and they're going to try and block it. Uh, Trump made uh, no bones about his view of it being a, a potential monopoly, even as a candidate. So it certainly makes uh, that road harder for for that deal to, to go through. Mm. All right. Let's look ahead to the rest of the week, Jim. It is a shortened week. We got half a day on Friday. What are you looking for this week? So we do get some meaningful economic data. Leading economic indi indicators came out today, and it was up more than expected, showing good economic activity. We get existing home sales, some manufacturing service sector gauges, FOMC minutes. But the reality is, in a trade short and holiday weekend like this, I wouldn't take uh, away any sort of trend from any day's activity. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll see what the week holds. Jim Lowell of Advisor Investments in Newton, Massachusetts. Jim, thank you. Thanks, Mike.